Okie dokies, here we are with assignment 16 of block 1, Evolve Artist. And I don't remember exactly why I decided <laughs> to fill in the background and do all of the lights before finishing up the dark colors, because typically we're supposed to start from the darkest shade and move to the lightest, but oh well, there it is. Anyways, I really like how this curriculum is structured so that the easier subjects, objects, whatever you call them, are earlier in, in the program. And then as you get farther along, you start to do harder topics, harder images. And this bowling pin apple and sideways cylinder, horizontal cylinder, is a really good example of that. Because as you can see, there are these two really narrow stripes at the neck of the bowling pin. And did I say bowling pin earlier? I don't remember. Anyways, there are two really thin stripes there that will make the gradients more challenging. And then I've always struggled a bit with cylinders that are on their sides because I can never fully it took me a long time I still don't know if I really got this but figuring out where the shadows and the gradients go so I actually ended up doing the shadow only up to like the bottom of the bottom stripe of the bowling pin and then leaving that white space in the middle for a gradient and then later the instructor actually told me no the the shadow is supposed to go all the way up and then you do the gradient and then you do the highlight on top of that and that's what gives it that kind of lighter look to it so apparently I did that wrong, didn't understand it conceptually. But anyways, now filling in all of these blank parts on the bowling pin, I left a little bit of a white line in between the light side and the dark side of the bowling pin, partly because that helps to avoid some contamination on the brushes. I'm going to try to keep the brushes, I generally use two brushes, one for the darks, the shadows, and then one for the light. So moderate and extreme shadows, one brush, one number six brush, filbert, and then the moderate and extreme lights is one number six brush. And then also I'm starting to use the, I think they're number twos, the really small brushes for the detail work here because we're getting into really skinny territory, like with the stripes on the bowling pin and the stem on the apple and so on and so forth. So I usually use only number six brushes for the entire painting, or I have in the past, but when it comes to the details, you really have to bust out those smaller um, diameter or smaller sized brushes. So now working on the gradients, beginning with the apple. And usually they say you want to make the gradient buffer really thick. And I think I really could have done more in terms of thickness on this apple gradient. But um, as you will see later, doing gradients on the thin, stripey parts of the bowling pin, you have to use you have to use thin gradients, you have to use the smaller brush. But anyways, so yeah, I, this is just another way of, another practice applying the techniques and principles that we've learned. And you might think, okay, why are we doing this again? You haven't learned anything new. You're still doing your shadows and your lights, values, and then doing your gradients and then doing reflections and highlights, there's no new technique yet. It's like, yeah, that's true, but it takes a while for these techniques to sink in. I mean, this is already, this is assignment 16 and I'm still struggling with gradients, but you know, maybe I'm slow. I don't know, it doesn't matter. At least I'm improving slowly but surely, I think. So anyways, um, doing a little bit of a gradient here at the, near the lip of the cylinder and once we have finished putting in all of the, the gradients, then we can start working on reflections and highlights. And I have something to say about that later. Um, anyways, yeah, so now we're doing the gradients on the bowling pin. And originally I left a little bit of white space because I know that I'm going to be filling be, white space between the dark and the light side of the bowling pin because I know I'm going to be putting a buffer layer on top of that anyways. So I don't have to fill in everything. Although I suppose it probably does make a difference in some sense. That's maybe the reason why a lot of painters do underpaintings before they do the overpaintings. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. And then now filling in the buffer for the, the top of the bowling pin. And there's almost no way, there really isn't a way to do the buffers the gradients on something as thin as those two stripes on the bowling pin without going up over the line a little bit, but that's okay because we can always come back and clean it up later. So, but still you want to generally try not to go over the line as much as you can because you don't want to leave yourself too much to clean up. That's one of the reasons why, um, well, at least in block one, 
we just trace whatever line art we've been given, including the border at the, the edges. But later on in block two, we're actually given the option to make our own still lives. And in those cases, they don't tell you how much of a space that you should have on the edges of the canvas. In fact, um, the instructor often, I asked once and they said, fill it up all the way to the edge if you want. And then I've seen some of my classmates though, use tape to tape the edges and then they paint over the tape. And then when they rip the tape off, you've got this really clean straight edge. But for me, I prefer, again, going back to don't really like the waste material, but also I like to practice um, painting the edges because that's more practice with straight edges and the more practice I can get getting good at straight edges the more it'll serve me in the future when I have to do straight edges in uh, paintings. Okay so now we're doing the reflections and highlights section of the painting putting some highlights on the apple because even within the shadow of the apple there are parts that are a little lighter than others and when you notice that and put that in there it really makes the image pop and then I notice that there's a bit of a glow on the upper right side of the apple. And because we don't have any value that's lighter than extreme light, the only way to get that glow in is to darken the stuff around it. But I don't think I did a particularly graceful job of it necessarily, oops. And then putting some highlights on the bowling pin as well. And that's basically the image. It ended up looking a little bit splotchy, but oh well. This is bowling pin, apple, and cylinder. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a wonderful creative day and paint something beautiful. See you next time.